group. And especially when we have, you know, pretty short day on Friday, each team plays only one time, gives them more opportunities to start practicing up, find out what they need to fix to be able to avoid elimination right now. So we're going to start ourselves off in the upper quarters between Perplexed and P.I. Me. Game number one going on right now in Theater of Pain. All right, let's see what those two teams are going to be playing here. I do think they're going to be sticking to their comp since this is a time trial map and we haven't really seen any other team comp that we've seen from the time trials and yes it does look like they're playing the same thing so we have the just standard comp with a hunter for this dungeon specifically hunter is actually pretty nice here because it's a very um i would say single target focused dungeon that these teams are still making into like or like turning it into an aoe dungeon anyway but you also have the soothe which is really nice for specifically this first pool here where you have the blackthorn who casts a tantrum which is a huge aoe um, channel on the whole group that you can actually dispel with the hunter. Yeah, and the main thing to look out for is if there's getting any sanguine healing uh, from that going down. And it looks like there's a little bit of healing on Virulent for PI me, but not too insanely high. But you can see how low they've gotten both Sathel and Desia on their ends as well. So it might have just been focus damage on those two that, that, they, that they got off. Maybe it was inside the AoE and like the AoE cap decided to hit those two instead of uh, Virulent. But all in all, it looks like more burst damage coming out of PI me here. They're giving themselves a little bit of a lead here even on this first boss, with just a similar pull right off the bat like that, playing just a little bit better on the first pull, P.I. Me is. Yeah, I mean, look at the damage on P.I. Me's side. I mean, it doesn't really look like the numbers are too different. It just looks like um, maybe different P.I. targets. Maybe Perplex chose to buff P.I. to the Hunter, while P.I. Me maybe chose to give it to the Mage. Maybe that is causing the difference in DPS here. Uh, interesting choice, considering that P.I. Me did seem like having a lot more damage there. Could also be different things. Maybe they didn't, as you said, um, stack it up fast enough. Maybe there was some um, AOE burst missing on some of the targets. We also see some achievements. Nice. <laughs> Congratulations to our observers for that achievement. That's insane. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, as we saw yesterday, they're going to be heading over to the Ghost Wing first. It's pretty typical nowadays. Just it's really easy to get your your prideful count set up in this wing, especially getting that second prideful for the boss lets you uh, kind of. Right now, using either Invis or Shadow Melds just to make sure they get by them, and then they'll move on to the rest of the trash afterwards. Or maybe they'll just yep, pull them. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, their their Shadow Melt is actually on cooldown, so. They must be just uh, dealing with all of this. Interesting. Okay, so a very interesting strat coming out of P.I. Me, pulling all of the Shackled Souls on top of the Portal Guardian. This is incredibly dangerous because these um, these souls, they do a huge amount of AOE damage um, to whoever they're targeting. You can see clicks dropping incredibly low as the Disc Bubble is also coming out by Igloo here. They are cutting it out of Sanguine really quickly, so that was actually really well executed. Perplex doing something similar in their side as well, but they're just a little bit later because they took so much longer in the first boss. Yeah, they opted to just go for the full skip and then pull afterwards, which you can see the difference in timing there. It's just so much more efficient to, to gather them up and then pull the portal, portal Guardian. Probably saved P.I.M.E. a solid 10, 20 seconds there, just playing it so yeah. much more clean. And of course, there was no there was, there was no major sanguine healing. The thing you have to watch out for is to make sure you kill all of those Shackle Souls after the, after the storm goes off from the Portal Guardian, which both teams did perfectly fine. But, you know, if that storm is going off and you kill some of the Soul Shackled guys there... Uh, you get some sanguine healing, could be a major issue, but of course, both of these teams are top tier. Neither of them had that issue. Yeah, one thing to note about Perplex as well is that they actually did get the number one seat on the time trials, um, but this is the only dungeon where they didn't win the overall time. They were only number two in time trials where Echo actually made number one. So this is definitely the dungeon. If you would uh, say that they're struggling on any of the time trial dungeons, then it would be this one compared to the other two where they got the number one seed. Uh, looks like Piani already triggered their 20% pride here, and they're dealing with it on top of the portal guardian as well. Pretty efficient. Yep, I mean, pulling manifestations of prides with trash is always a dangerous prospect, especially something like the portal guardian where a soul storm goes off at the same time as it's pulsing damage from the prideful. It's something your healer's gonna be really danger in huge danger for. You can see the pain suppression was was used by Igloo there just to make sure that they'd be totally fine. Probably see something similar coming out from Perplex as well, although Ryzen's able to hold on to the, to the pain suppression, so I'll have that later on. But especially on this Grievous axis, uh, affix, all of that extra damage coming out, stacking Grievous on your group, really have to make sure that that's not an issue. Of course, in this section of the dungeon, it's a little bit of a uh, fail-safe uh, baked into the dungeon. Whenever you click the portal, everyone's healed the full, so which removes all those Grievous, Grievous affixes, but if that didn't exist, it would be a really dangerous area. 
Yeah, I agree. We did see um, some teams yesterday as well really um, make use of this heal from the portal very heavily. We saw the healers just completely stop even trying to heal people as they uh, as the trash pull was about to end because they knew they're just going to be clicking the portal and healing it back up. So really nice um, presence of mind to not uh, mind to not have you know any healing cities wasted when they know uh, we're going to be healed up immediately. This mag was actually healing quite a bit here for perplexed um, as every like the other three magus went down, but this one didn't, and then it just healed up from those sanguine pulls. Uh, did get a knock out of it, but yeah, so it's going to cost them a little bit of time. Yeah, and you can see just the. The, the Sanguine Healing is really going to be the main factor, I think, in this dungeon, right? Any major Sanguine Healing go off is a huge time loss. We almost saw something similar happen for P.I. Me, where they had two ma mages left while the other two died, and they were standing in Grievous. But there was actually a, re a really cool play where Dr. J stood right next to them, and it looked like a Igloo used his Shining Force to knock them back off of Dr. J, so they didn't have any issues with Sanguine Healing there. They made sure they got them out pretty much instantly. So, again, P.I. Me is just playing really well right now. And this might be, this might be a new side of P.I. Me. We talked about this a little bit in the pregame section where we talked about how this entire season P.I. has just lost in the first round and had to make some ridiculous lower bracket run to try to, you know, get back into the tournament. But, you know, what if what if P.I. just wins in the first round and starts playing really well in the upper bracket and they're doing it right now? Yeah, they definitely are. As they have a very clean run, they're already done with their 40% pride. They're walking to that next boss where they're... I mean, we've seen some teams uh, pull some of the souls on top of this boss, which is basically just free percentage, as long as you don't get uh, any sanguine pulls on the boss, which they should be able to. And this this is why we see Rentari just go to the edge here, just uh, throw a sigil down there, and now they're all going to be um, basically teleporting, snapping up to the boss. They're going to be evading for a little while, as you can see right now, and then they will be attackable, and they're going to make sure they're not dropping that sanguine below the boss. Perplex now also on the box, but yeah, just. There, it really looks like Perplex is doing everything just slightly slower. Yep, I mean, yeah. It, it comes down to a game of inches right now, especially with the Sanguine Affix in play. Now, of course, the Sanguine underneath Kolthorak doesn't actually heal him, as far as I'm aware, because he's in midair, similar oh, to like... because he's flying? Right, because he's, he's not actually oh, on the ground, okay. right? So there's not too much of an issue if you kill him right underneath him. That's why you hmm, see uh, okay. Perplex is just, just killing him right there. So it's not that big of an issue. It's a little, little bit of a weird interaction, I'm sure, but... Yeah, so it you don't have to be too perfect here. But that being said, P.I.M.E. still has a massive advantage here. They didn't have to worry about the positioning, but 20% on the boss, even on Fortified, you can see these tiny little advantages that they've been uh, giving themselves, playing Sanguine perfectly throughout the course of the dungeon. It's manifesting here, right? They have about a 20 to 25 second lead purely off of their Sanguine play alone. And if they're able to keep that up throughout the entire dungeon, they should be giving themselves a win here, which is really, really scary considering the second dungeon in our series is Mists, and we know that they have a time that was faster mm -hmm. than anything we saw in time trials. Yeah, and uh, it's funny because Perplex actually got the number one seed in time trials, but they're played with that standard comp, so they didn't actually play that Holy Paladin Shadow Priest that we've seen P.I. Me adapt to after seeing it from Reload Fulcrum in the time trials. And as you mentioned, they beat Perplex number one time in yesterday's game that they played. So very interesting if Perplex actually also is going to be adjusting to this um, comp with the Paladin, or if they just stick to their strat because they got the number one seed in the time trials. So maybe they were confident and were saying, you know what, we don't need to adapt to this uh, because we got the number one seed. But maybe uh, that's not actually going to work out after we see P.I. me just beating their time with the different comp. Really dangerous pull coming out from both teams. We saw this yesterday from our Theater of Pain runs where they pull literally three packs on top of each other. The danger here is that there are about three or four Sludge Spearers out, and if any of them get their Withering Discharge cast off on the group, that can be a lot of damage going out, which also it results in, in stacking Grievous sacks on the entire group. Looks like P.I.M. is going to be able to pull their, uh, their pull off. All the Sludge Spearers are dead. They only have one Horror and a Butcher left. Still some leaps coming out from Perplex, but look at what Perplex is doing with their Trash Pack. Instead of kiting backwards, they're kiting towards the end of the dungeon. So they're saving themselves some time here for sure. Piami was actually kiting backwards towards the center of the dungeon. So I think that Perplex has made up a little bit of the advantage here. Now, of course, it looks like they had one trash bomb stuck in the back there, which is a little bit weird. Uh, can we actually get a POV on that? Yeah, the Butcher healed the full and so that. literally. Did they skip that? Okay, so if they I didn't skip so, that, yeah. that'd be really bad. But Ashine has gone Ooh, down Ashine. here now. Yeah, so 
I think Ashan was trying to secede the Butcher because they want oh, to yeah. Shadow Melt off the aggro here. But then he went down to um, just being low HP, having Grievous stacks on him as well. Maybe even like a chop went off, not really sure what happened. But they have to use the Mass Rest here to get him back up. So it's, they're not going to be, I mean, it's not too big of a time loss. But considering that they're already behind, this is really going to hurt them. Not just the five seconds, but also the Mass Rest that has to be casted here by Ryzen to get him back up. Now, Piami, though, on the other hand, um, they got their... They got their pride done. They're in 60 percent pride, and now they're going to be attempting this huge pull that we've seen. Two teams already have a full team wipe. Two, there's a cast going through Ooh. for Perplexed. Two of them. Two of them went through. You can sell two stacks on Divine Field there. Super dangerous scenario for them. Now he has two stacks. Of, oh my gosh, man. This is so dangerous for Perplexed here. You can see P.I. Me on the other hand. They just have full HP bars because they were able to instantly burst this pull down with that prideful buff. So it paid off in space for them to deal with that prideful. Whereas over on the side of Perplex, they're dealing with all that AOE rot damage with three stacks on all of their DPS going off while they still have the prideful up. While it's still on 10 stacks, Bryson is going to have to pump out some huge heals there. Otherwise, there's going to be no way for them to get through this. The Cauterize is now proc for Dr. J. He doesn't have the ice block available for another 10 or 15 seconds here. They, everyone is so low. How are they going to get through this? This is so incredibly crazy that they're still alive here. Ryzen is completely low on mana as the shine's going down. Dr. Wolf, like Wolf Disco is just trying to ice block to get, uh, to just save. And I think Wolf Disco is, yeah, there we go. Wolf Disco doing that. Damn. They might be able to finish this off, but this is like a really huge time loss. I'm not sure if Ryzen can even keep himself alive here, considering that he is completely tapped on mana. This is a huge time loss. This one cast going through at 20% damage reduction on the whole group just really costing them so much here. They do have a battle rest, so uh, Divine Field actually getting Ryzen back up, and now they get the battle rest. Yeah. But yeah, just... Uh, that was a... It's just a huge time loss. I also think I called Wolf Disco yeah. Dr. J, so that might have been my fault there. <laughs> but um, man, that's... <laughs> That's really unfortunate. Now, getting the battle res off of Ryzen does help a little bit. He's able to get the mass res off, so they will be able to get everyone up and have most of the pride buff available when they pull these two mobs into the boss. But look at the, the time difference here. That's going to be now 25 seconds on the board, not to mention they now have up to 70% of an advantage on Gorchop here. P.I. Me is now firmly in the driver's seat, right? With only one wing left after Gorchop, they'd have to make some massive mistakes to let Perplex back in. And... You know, it's kind of crazy to think that Perplex is a team that we've been talking about for so long. They've had perfect dungeons, but look at them again. Just more issues. No. Swagfist going down. Now is Shine also going down as well? They're probably going to have to... Yeah, it's probably just going to be a full team wipe here unless they decide to slowly rot through this boss here with one DPS alive. It's going to take them so long to get through, though. Yeah, and they still have the trash alive, too. That they so they, Since they had this wipe, they were just trying to pull the rest of the trash on top of this boss. But uh, with a shine dead, this is going to take them so long. And then you also have a uh, sanguine management and a huge amount of tank damage as well on this boss. If you have a butcher alive that you have to cut, you see Divine Field is basically out of defenses because of this pull that happened earlier. Uh, so this is going to be really hard for Perplex to even finish off, even if they wanted to. Piamido, on the other hand, they are having such a clean run there. They are zero deaths still. They are in this in the next wing here, in the last wing they have to do. And yeah, it's just really looking so good for Piami. But even before Perplex had these issues, Piami was already ahead. So definitely just showing how good Piami is playing today. Yep, for sure. And of course, we know for a fact that the rest of the percentage is going to come from this wing plus the three pack upstairs. So they're probably not going to end up dealing with that final prideful. Uh, actually, some teams do deal with the final, final prideful before the final boss, right? So we've seen a couple differing strategies there. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can see the advantage that PIMA has gained for themselves here, right? They are now already in the wing. They're going to be proccing their, their fourth prideful here. Uh, I mean, they're probably a minute and a half ahead or something right now. This is a huge advantage they've gained for themselves with the way they played in this dungeon. And, you know, we've talked a lot in the past about how PIME is that Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde team, but they are playing perfectly right now. Like this is this is the PIME that's been able to take, you know, actually take tournaments in the past, right? This team is, when when they're good, they're, they're insanely good. Yeah, I definitely agree. And you can see it right here. Uh, one thing I didn't mention yet is uh, that both of the priests actually are playing Necrolord. We did previously see um, priests playing Night Fae uh, to basically reduce the Mage's Combustion uh, cooldown to have an even lower CD on that one. But in this dungeon, they want to play that Necrolord to make sure they can activate the banner because none of the other DPS really wants to play that Covenant. So it's the two priests that actually um, clicking those banners, getting that versatility and the movement speed as well. And now it looks like Piami is gathering up um, 
not sure if they're trying to skip this or if they're gathering it, but it looks like they're pulling the mini boss on top of the trash pack here without the captain. Okay, so this is actually really efficient. Uh, they're excluding the captain because of the aura that the captain has with the AOE damage reduction on nearby mobs, and they're just uh, cleaving down the arbalists with the mini boss here. Yeah, and this is actually pretty dangerous in these Avex combo, right? The, yeah. the amount of AOE damage that goes off on the group uh, is is kind of insane on some of these mini bosses. Now, of course, Bloodthirsty, I, I don't think this is the one that does AOE damage, right? This is the single target dot that it does. So you really only have to focus too much of your damage on one mob. But with both of the Arbalests alive, there can be a lot of group that go up. Yeah, there goes the Ricocheting Blade on Igloo right there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a little scary. He is Oom. Are they going to chain this into the next one while he's Oom? That would seem... That's kind of like that the wrong thing to very do. Very risky. <laughs> yes. Okay, it looks like they're not chaining. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they're just finishing this off because uh, Eagle is struggling a bit on mana. Everyone has high grievous stacks here because of all of the bleed effects that are actually being applied. Not just Haruja is applying that single target bleed, but you also have the Arbalists that apply bleed effects on the whole group. So that's very taxing on the healer's mana to be able to keep everyone alive. Now they're just walking past that last mini boss and they also um, Shadow Melted off the aggro from the captain that they had to seat previously. So they don't want to deal with that one as they're already up to 98% trash. The last percentage they're going to be getting as they're fighting the last boss to just skip the last pride. So now they only have Xav left to kill and the last boss. And I mean, if you're looking at their at their deaths, still zero deaths, perfect, uh, perfect brand by them so far. 16 minutes almost into this dungeon, and they only have two bosses left. Yeah, I'm actually really curious how this is going to stack up against some of the fastest time trial times you've seen, right? Uh, when we look yeah. at the actual time trial times from Theater of Pain earlier uh, last week, last weekend, I think the fastest time we had was from Echo. That was about 18 and a half minutes. So this looks like it could be right up there with them, right? They'll have the bloodlust for the final boss here. So we'll actually have to see how fast they can stack up against Echo because this looked like essentially a perfect run, right? Very minimal Sanguine healing. They were able to use their utilize their knockbacks to make sure they kept things out of Sanguine. Uh, very fast routing too, no major issues. All of their massive pulls are dealt with pretty cleanly. Although I think, I, I would say if there's one spot where they lost a little bit of time, it would have been the very first pull in the Gorchop wing, right? And the Abomination wing, they had a little bit of weird kiting issues mm. where they kind of kited the wrong direction. They could have saved time by kiting towards the boss instead of away. But other than that, yeah, pretty much as good a run as you can expect to have in the middle of cup play. Yeah, and I mean, looking at Perplex, they also had a little bit of an issue yesterday in their time trial run where they played um, Necrotic Wake versus Petus Angels, where they almost had a full team wipe on one of their pulls. A fear went through, then they didn't get the weapon off. And yeah, it just really seems like uh, Perplex is struggling a little bit early on in this tournament. Really not something we are used to seeing by them. Uh, in the first and the second cup, they just completely played perfectly, almost having zero deaths in every single dungeon. So really a little bit out of the ordinary for Perplex. As Piami, though, on the other hand, uh, as you're talking about just playing perfectly, now they're dealing with this last pride, um, that 80% pride that they skipped earlier. Um, they just want to make sure they are finishing it here while um, one of the other players went up to trigger the event. It was Kuri on the Hunter, just going up, triggering the RP event to make sure the last boss spawns while they're dealing with this pride here. Yep, for sure. Just good routing in general. Making They don't even have to proc their fifth prideful to deal with the prideful, right? They just have the buff for the final boss. Now, of course, I think the problem with this routing is you can't send one person up early. Well, you can, but it's kind of it'd be kind of weird to have your whole group in combat with the prideful while one person goes up. Uh, wait, no, no, no. I'm trolling. Dr. J actually did the ultra time trick where he came back down after... No, Corey after... just went up. The hunter just... Uh... Did he really? I think he just went up. Yeah, he just went up. Huh. He has feigned death, right? So he can... Oh, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess they could do Get that. Get out of combat uh, come up. It would, it would make sense to have a mage do the Ultra Triumph trick, though. You can go up, park the RP, Ultra Time back yep. down, and help your team with the Prideful. I think that'd be the most optimal thing to do. That being said, Probably, though, the boss yeah. is getting completely destroyed here with Blood wow. Loss, Prideful, PI, already at 40% here. And remember, that time to beat was 1830, so they're not quite on pace with Echo, which is really scary considering how good this run looked for PI. Yes. <laughs> uh, that being said, still a clean run overall. Yeah, that actually is kind of interesting to see that uh, we were watching Piami do this perfect run, but um, Echo even had a faster run with 1833. Very interesting to see. But Piami, uh, very clean for their time trial run that they had. So definitely good to see that they can 
um, finish such a perfect dungeon on tournament because time trials, of course, is always um, five tries and not just one. So to see them pull off this strategy on uh, the tournament is just really impressive. As they're finishing off the boss here and the last trash map that they need to proc the 100% trash enemy forces, and they're going to be winning the first game against Perplex in the series. Wow. There it is, P.I. Me taking the victory there in Theater of Pain. And, you know, once again, we were talking about it beforehand, Tettles, that Construct Wing can just be so ridiculously deadly. My heart was just, like, breaking watching the Prideful and all the ticking damage and Grievous going on all at once. Oh. Yeah, okay, so, I mean, that, that was, like, the biggest deal with this run and uh, honestly that's the biggest difference in strategy that's why echo has a faster run that's why perplex has a faster run in time trials than pi me even and it's because of how they deal with the gore chop wing pi me has a lot safer of a strategy they get that 60 percent pride they do a big pull in the gore chop wing but they have the prideful buff for it whereas perplex is at 58 percent count and like once they kill off all the small mobs that spawn with the gas bag then they have the gas bag that does the backle with the pride and, it's and frontal like, exactly and the frontal and that's they're just like stuck in grievous purgatory mm -hmm. and they have a withering blight go off from the sludge spear which makes your group do 20 percent less healing 20 percent less damage and you're just like well i guess this is the end of this pull it, it, you just like watch them bleed out over the course of 40 seconds and try to kill off as much as they really could i mean i think i think that that pull is very time efficient especially whenever you do have the pride that spawns into it and then you're able to pull the trash into gore chop but is it is it consistent enough for like broadcast i, I don't know it's, it's hard to really say because now we've seen echo perplexed and sloth all wiped to the exact same pull and the pi yeah. me they do a smaller adaptation but it's at least consistent yeah and, and I, I think in a lot of cases it seemed to be just more on I, I suppose how well the mobs were really just rallied together, you're able to really notice the difference between how quickly those ads died. So I'm not sure if somebody was just missing a cooldown there. And you're, uh, Zyra, you were talking beforehand about both priests running Necrolord to be able to have the buff. So I'm just not sure if they're not able to more easily get uh, additional damage up or a second combust up more rapidly to be able to burn everything down at that point. But a lot of credit to Ryson for trying to keep that pull together as long as he did because we were just seeing, yeah. you know, you, you called it out there where everybody's sitting at 20% forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely rough. I'm not really sure how, how much of an advantage having the Night Fate on the Priest would be in this dungeon, right? Because there's a lot of lost opportunity whenever you do end up running uh, Night Fae on, on Mage, right? It, it's really only good in these super specific MDI scenario where you can have a Combust for literally every single big pull. Otherwise, you're missing out on your typical one-minute buffs that you have a Combust, right? You don't have your Trinket, you don't have your Racial up as often, so... Yeah, for scenarios like that, big pull and gore chopping, maybe it'd be really good. But obviously having the Necro and versatility buff is probably a little better for the course of the dungeon. I mean, I think the most damning thing is that withering discharge going off. Right, I, yeah. I think that like once that happens, like you're doing 20% reduced damage, your your <laughs> healer is doing 20% less healing, everybody's stuck at 20% health because and now they're stuck in Grievous with the pride active, and you're like, all right, well, this is probably yeah. the end of that. And then you're having to pick and choose between getting the spells off on a priority targets versus trying to top somebody. We, we saw them just sitting in uh, Hunter's Turtle and Ice Block and everything like that for very extended periods of time, trying to survive throughout the entire thing. I mean, it really makes me wonder if they would have been able to pull off that pull if they actually got the kick on that cast. Like, because mm -hmm. they, were, they were close with the cast going off, and I wonder if they would have been able to do it clean without the cast being missed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Something that they're going to definitely have to look at in the future, because that's, you know, we, we were mentioning it yesterday where it was a little bit of a slump day for Perplexed, where they just weren't playing as well as, you know, we've come to expect from them. So when we start moving ourselves on to Mr. Tier Nasai, that's going to be a huge expectation for us to look forward to. And again, we've been hammering it all weekend, Nagura. Paladin's dominance, obscene amounts of damage here. Yeah, I mean, this is... We've talked about uh, Perplex just being the favorites in the series, but now that P.I. Me unexpectedly won this first um, game, this first dungeon, it's actually a possibility for P.I. Me to just win this whole series with a 2-0, because 
they have the fastest run in this dungeon so far that we have seen. We haven't seen any other team be faster than Piami with that uh, Paladin comp that we saw them play yesterday. Perplex got the number one seed in time trials, uh, but it wasn't as fast as Piami's run with that different uh, newly invented comp that uh, Reload Fulcrum was running for the first time. So if Perplex didn't actually adapt to this new comp, it's very possible that Piami just has a faster run in this dungeon too. I do think that generally Perplex's route through Mists of Tune of Scythe, like week in and week out, has been slightly better with how they're pulling some of their maze stuff, um, especially with like how they're pulling some of their maze trash through the wall where they're getting their pride. But yeah, I, I completely agree, Nigger. If Perplex is, doesn't play the meta, comp, like the most meta comp with the H Pally, I I don't see how they're able to even take this down. Yeah, and we saw a very similar occurrence as well when it came to uh, P.I. Me and Golden Guardians of running the Paladin, not running the Paladin, and how quickly people were actually adapting to that meta, and it was really on display. Uh, in Zyro, I think from, you know, MDI going on for so many years, it's so interesting to see how much better teams have gotten on broadcast compared to their time trial runs, because I was just looking, for example, at P.I. Me, and they're, again, about 10, 15 seconds faster than their time trial run. Something that was so rare for us for a long time, and now it's almost like expected that they're going to be doing even better than that when they hit the cup play. Well, I think the really interesting thing to look at here is how well PME just adapted to the meta, right? They saw that Reload Fulcrum, who was a team that, you know, was consistently one of, just, just outside of our top six that we talk about so often, get the second fastest overall time in miss and mists with that paladin comp and they're like well if they can get that fast of a time we should be able to go even faster so they ended up practicing it after the fact which is something we don't see a lot of teams do usually you know when, when you have your, two, your three time trial dungeons you would assume that the, the three three or four practice days you get during time trial weekend should be enough for those dungeons and like you, you'll maybe just come back to them just once or twice during your practice for the cup just to make sure you're good on them but pmi decided to just completely revamp their strategy here and it's working out like crazy for them absolutely let's see what game number two is going to have in mind and that sort of adaptation and instantly looking to change and improve kind of reminds me of what we saw as well from bfa i think it was what angry toast with their gigantic pull yeah. into dazar <laughs> and atal dazar and everything like that you know resign into atal dazar there we go yeah, I love that kind of stuff. So, instant ad adaptation. Let's see what they got in store. Game number two, getting underway here in Mists. Yeah, I definitely love to see when they're, especially when newer teams are coming into the MDI and just uh, just breaking the meta with something new. But yeah, it looks like Perplex did not adapt to this new comp. So no Holy Paladin, no Shadow Priest out of Perplex here. Because they got the number one uh, time in the time trials, they're thinking they don't actually have to adapt to this new meta. So this is going to be incredibly close. And yeah, very possible for Piami to win this if they're just pulling off the same time that we saw them do yesterday with those 14 minutes uh, that we saw with the huge damage coming out of that Holy Paladin with the Ashen Hallow. Yeah, for sure. And I think the other interesting thing to mention as well is the fact that I don't think the Shadow Priest is necessarily that in insane of a DPS class. I think the big thing to look at here is that the, the, the DPS outside of the mage in your group comp are really kind of utility choices. If you look at it from a realistic standpoint, when you, whenever you look at overall damage in these in these time trial dungeons, the mage is usually doing somewhere along the lines of 10 to 12K, depending on the dungeon, sometimes up to 15K, like in Holds of Atonement. And your DP, your other DPS classes are usually doing eight to nine K overall, so they're not really there for damage. They're there for you, there for utility. So the DK that the priest is typically replacing, the priest will probably do about as much damage as the DK. But running that priest lets you, gives you access to the holy paladin. And if you're in a dungeon where you don't need shadow melt, from what we've seen from previous dungeons, the holy paladin will do up to three times as much damage as a disc priest, which is completely nuts when when you can factor that into your overall DPS. Yeah, definitely. We also see both of them actually doing a very, very similar pull where um, I like this adaptation as well. This is not something we've seen previously in the previous cups. Um, what they're doing here is mind soothe the whole trash pack and then they get the two um, bigger mobs from uh, before the boss and they kite them back. So Divine Field is picking up the two mobs and Rentari while the rest of the team is picking up the mushrooms to get the, the stat buff uh, from the Night Fae Covenant. And while this is all happening, uh, they pull the rest of the trash on top of them to just AOE nuke everything down. I really, really like this because it's uh, a lot more efficient than to deal with the first trash bag and then deal with those uh, two mobs. So it looks like Perplexed dealt with this trash quite a bit faster though. 
as they are already down to 40% on the pride and they are now engaging the boss. So Piami dealing with the trash a little bit slower. Yep, for sure. A little bit of an advantage for sure for Perplex here, but it's all going to come down to this burst on the boss. Perplex doesn't really have a comp that you would consider be, to be the best burst comp, whereas Piami is like full in on the burst, right? They've got the balance for the for the Celestial Alignment Convoke where they can just do a ridiculous amount of burst damage on the boss. They've got the Priest, they've got the, the Holy Paladin's probably going to actually top damage <laughs> outside of the Convoke, I'd have to say. So we'll see how much faster they're going to be. We know Piami is going to easily burst this in one phase, but I'm curious to see how clean Perplex can be with their burst phase. Yeah, Perplex is about to trigger that um, first. We also see a fear coming out, unfortunately, uh, and no totem or anything to get rid of that, so they just have to sit through it, and they're now triggering their face. So let's see how much damage they have on Ingra <laughs> as all of the cooldowns are being popped. We also see the PI and the combustion, of course, coming out of Wolf Disco, just melting Ingra. I'm not sure if they're going to get it all done? Yes, okay, there we go. Ingra is just completely melting, but not as fast as it was melting for Piami. Piami just completely destroyed that boss, even though they reached the phase quite a bit later. They finished off the boss so much faster that they now made up the time they lost on the previous trash pack. And yeah, you might have seen the damage meters there for Piami. Uh, clicks Druid bursting for about 41k. Yeah, he's got Convoke, <laughs> uh, you know, Druid things. But then there was a Holy Paladin doing 30k <laughs> DPS there. That's, you know, that's something you're not really used to see, like, seeing, right? Yeah, Holy Paladin and their cooldowns is uh, completely broken right now. And you saw it right there. Piami, yes, they did the trash a little bit slower, but they pretty much made up the entire difference on that trash pack right there. And they're even dealing with this trash pack after the boss just a little bit faster than perplexed. Yeah, definitely looks like it. We also have bolstering, something we haven't really talked about yet. Um, bolstering uh, can be annoying in this dungeon because uh, in the maze area, you have a bunch of different kinds of HPs on these mobs that you see. So um, they really need to make sure they have even damage. One thing to note as well is that um, like Moonkin's like the, the, the Moonkin setup with the Shadow Priest and the Mage is actually pretty good at uh, evening up the damage on those targets because we do have a lot of single target damage on the Moonkin with the targeted Star Surges that you can throw out to make sure the damage is even. So that really uh, just goes to um, the, the bolstering affix as well, really helping them out there. And we also saw some strategies yesterday where the teams were pulling trash on top of the mini-boss area. Of course, these mazes are actually fixed uh, for the tournament, so all of these teams know exactly the way they have to go, and they know which mobs are going to be coming up, so they have all of these routes already set up previously. Yeah, and it's kind of weird to talk about where the, where the teams are pulling trash through the wall. There's certain walls in this maze section that are just kind of full of holes. So if you have a ranged, if you have yep. a ranged class in your group, what you can do is you can just tag something through the wall. So when you're dealing with a single target mini boss, which is usually not very efficient in the MDI scenario, pull some trash on top of it, make it an AOE pull. And that's what we see the teams doing. Of course, also just in, in the theme of doing things efficiently, whenever you spawn a prideful, have somebody drop aggro and open up the mists, because you have you have to be out of aggro to go through the door. So you can have someone shadow meld and hit the door. You can just pull the pride in the next pack and AOE it down. Just making sure they're as efficient as possible. Never doing something single target if they don't have to. Yeah, and I mean, look how close those two teams are. But Corey actually going down for P.I. Mir. Looks like he got hit by one of those um, stuns from the pride debuff. So they had to use a battle rest to get him back up. A little bit of a time loss, considering that uh, this is so close between those two teams. You really don't want to see this happen. We also see the convo coming out of clicks here um, uh, without this lesser alignment, actually. So probably going to save that for the boss later on. Uh, just getting a little bit more damage on the single target mob, making sure the HP is evened out between the mini boss and the rest of the trash bag that they're pulling here because of that bolstering affix. We also see um, Necrotic can be handled so, so well by Demon Hunters. That's really an affix that we don't talk about very often just because how well these Demon Hunters can handle it uh, if they have to. They can just cut away, leap away. Uh, they also have the Ring of Pieces usually on Perplex side at least um, to help them out kiting. And force of nature, if you need it, right? As um, Munkins as well. And then you also have the Kyrian vial that you can use, since all of these um, Vengeance Demon Hunters are playing Kyrian, so they can use that vial to just completely get rid of those stacks. 
yeah, lots of tools to, to deal with necrotics. So it's essentially a non-affics unless you get into a scenario where you're actually just completely out of cooldowns, which usually on a plus 18 tyrannical, especially scenario, you usually won't find yourself falling into. That being said, you can see at the beginning of these pulls, they can pretty quickly go up to about 20, 25 stacks. And that can be a little dangerous if you keep stacking past that point, but it looks like Rintari is going to let that fall off here and he's not going to be in any danger whatsoever. PI me is having a really good time with these trash packs though. You can see that almost throughout this entire maze phase, both teams have been relatively even when, with how they've been dealing with it, but just Piami randomly has now pulled insanely far ahead on that final trash pack and given themselves once again about a 10, 15 second advantage, similar to what we saw in the beginning of Theater of Pain earlier on. Yeah, and it's very interesting to see the different kinds of damage profiles these teams have because of the completely different comp, right? Of course, um, the damage that the Paladin is putting out is on a really long cooldown. You have a four minute cooldown on that Ash and Hollow. So uh, once in a while, the Paladin can really, like the Paladin team can push ahead whenever they have this cooldown available. And outside of that, they maybe don't have as much as Perplex team. And then you also have the Moonkin, which also struggling, struggles a little bit whenever he doesn't have Celeste Alignment available or whenever there's no Lunar Eclipse uh, that he can cycle into. So definitely a little bit of a difference in the damage profiles, but it looks like um, both Perplex and Piami are triggering the intermission phase very close to evenly, but Piami just a little bit ahead because they, deal, they, they, they dealt with the maze so much quicker. Yeah, it looks like what happened there is that PM I mean, committed a lot of their cooldowns to that trash pack right before the boss here, whereas Perplex yeah. decided to save a lot of their cooldowns for the boss. So especially you can see the army coming out from the DK has put them has pretty much caught them completely up on boss damage here. That being said, you can see that the CA from Clix is going to be coming up probably for this last phase here. And we almost saw them pull this off yesterday, but a huge, yeah. huge, huge time save that you can really only pull off with it with a balance root in your group is to skip the final illusion phase completely. So when the boss hits 10%, you just have to burst the last 10% as quickly as possible. And I think the only thing you can do that with is probably with the CA Convoke the Spirits here. So we're gonna see them go for it here. I think they got it to 3% yesterday. And if they're able to pull it off here, it's easily like a 10 to 15 second, maybe even a 20 second time save. Yeah, and uh, yesterday they had a, a Vulpin spawn and then half of the Convoke of clicks actually went into that one. So they have to make sure they immediately root it if it spawns with like a frost nova by dr j because if oh, it's rooted, it. it doesn't actually hit it the no oh, they just really didn't make it okay oh. and the same thing happened again look at the vulpin the vulpin is on 70 oh, it, oh okay it wow okay so even through the off. damage reduction yeah it's like a 90 percent damage 99 even i think wow uh, it's a huge damage reduction but they still managed to finish it off uh, through that so insane and that's a pretty big time save again it would have been an even bigger save of course if they didn't uh, proc that face at all the guessing game but uh, yeah huge that's why they were saving those big cooldowns by that moonkin so well done wow man that could have been really bad that vulpin was spawning like as he was channeling his convoke and it could have been really bad if like it spawned yeah. right before the convoke but it looks like they just barely got enough damage there to finish it off and you can see the time save for them like they're they're up now easily 15 seconds here even with the death on the board so as long as they're able to stay mm -hmm. clean on this trash we know that they have the better burst damage for the final boss with all of the h -Pel cooldowns with pi with lust they'll be able to burst with that boss ridiculously fast I mean, they, they might actually be faster than the time we saw yesterday by them. Um, and yesterday was already the fastest time we've seen in uh, Miss at all throughout time trials and yesterday's tournament. They did have a 14 minutes and 10 second time yesterday. And now we're uh, not even 11 minutes into the dungeon and they're already fighting the 80% pride here on Piami's side. Perplex really close on their heels though, as they're also triggering that 80% pride. And they have the five seconds uh, uh, advantage because they have zero deaths on their board. So this is definitely something that Perplex can still win. We're going to have to keep an eye on the damage specifically as they're probably gathering up a huge pull after this pride where they're just pulling um, a bunch of trash. Uh, one thing to note as well is bolstering. How are they going to be handling bolstering here specifically with the boss as well? Yeah, I, I think the, the the change you make here is just to not pull this on top of the boss like we see in most weeks. Yeah, and you can see they're pretty much committing all yeah. the cooldowns here. The Combust is out, the Convoke is 
uh, no CA, just to convoke, just to naked convoke here to help with damage here. Uh, yeah, so they're just going to be using all their cooldowns on this, make sure they get this AoE down. That being said, keep an eye on Perplexed here. They decided to just pull the trash pack with the Prideful here. You can see how low yeah. everyone else is. The Cauterize is available for Wolf Disco. He hasn't actually procced that yet, but with the Pride going down, most of the danger is gone. Most of the AoE burst on the group, and that's going to be a very big time save for Perplexed versus what we saw from PI. I mean, they just probably saved a lot of the difference here, and they're going to be pulling Tradova only five to ten seconds after PI. Me. So Perplex is definitely just caught up here, and you can see they have most of their cooldowns coming up. The Army of the Dead is going to be available any moment here. Now I'll probably save that for the Lust that's coming up in about 30 seconds, but man, uh, Perplex has pretty much made up almost all the difference, even from that miscolor uh, skip that PI me did here with that pull. Yeah, that was an insane pull. It was really close as well. Everyone was dropping so low. Uh, not sure if they uh, plan to do this or if this is something they came up with uh, later on. But look at the time, right? It's 12 minutes 30 into this dungeon and they only have Tredova left to kill. So this is going to be an incredibly fast run by both of these teams. Uh, look at the single target damage. Of course, we do have the, the damage from the Paladin that still is going to be coming up. So Ashen Hollow not popped yet, if you can look at the damage meter. So there's going to be a huge increase in damage soon by Piami, as they're also popping that Bloodlust as well. Perplex also had, has Bloodlust running, and look at the damage! They're actually catching up! Perplex is now ahead on boss damage compared to Piami. So this is going to be incredibly close, especially with those five seconds that we still have on the board uh, in favor of Perplex. But look at the cooldowns that are going to be coming up here for PI yes. in about 20 to 30 seconds here. The CA is available for clicks. He's almost surely just waiting for the Convoke to, to be back up and for those Larvas to be dead, and then he'll be bursting the boss down here. Is there time, though? Also, Igloo, man, Igloo, the cooldowns have come up for him, and he's just topping the meters on the boss right now. Just... Yes. HPAL things. Of course, the Convoke is now up for clicks. Tradova is getting completely bursted down in that wow. CA Convoke cooldown here. And man, P.I. Me has just played this dungeon to essentially perfection here. Outside of the one death from Curry here, Tradova is going to be going down for them. All they'll need to do after this is deal with one final trash mob here. How do you how do you beat this comp right here, right? Uh, the the HPAL just seems to be so, so strong. I 100% agree. I think this is definitely the comp you want to be running in this dungeon. As they're finishing off the last boss, five seconds not going to be enough for Perplex. SPI me is just going to be surprisingly winning this series wow, against man. Perplex 2-0. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. PI me, early adaptation of all the new meta strats and everything. We saw it as well in week one, how teams, especially like Echo, were taking advantage of Night Fae Priest, and then week two, everybody started adapting that. Now it's been Paladins and Mr. Tiernasai, and maybe some other dungeons as well in the future. Piami taking that 2-0 sweep over Perplexed, and the upsets really just keep on coming for this team. I mean, Piami has been playing lights out all weekend here, Tettles. Yeah, I mean, that... that they saw Mr. Tirasite twice. We saw them get under 1410 both times. Uh, really flexing that new composition with the the Shadow Priest, Holy Paladin, Moonkin. And I, look at the look at the DPS. 